Okay, so now we are going to look into the question three of this case of cool wipes. So here, the question three is that if Matt could design a new network from scratch and assume that he did not have to have the Chicago planned, but could build it at the cost and capacity specified in the case, what production network would you recommend? So here, the thing is that we don't have to force it to really consider the Chicago plant. Okay, we just keep things open. We could have the Chicago, but we could have the, also the other plants. Okay, and then uh, what would be the solution? Okay, and would your solution be different if the transportation cost were half of their value or the transportation cost was double of their value? Okay, so again, we are going to have three parts here. So let's go to Excel. Here we have done the question one, and then we have also done the question two, part one, two, and three. So now we are going to do question three, part one. But before we go to the question three, part one, I have realized that there is a small uh, mistake here in our, in our solution. Uh, and that is the transportation cost of this one, Los Angeles to Northwest. Okay, so if we look here, Los Angeles to Northwest, it is 4.36. And here we have 4.34, so I should make it 4.36. And then I should update it in everywhere. Okay, so 36, and here we are going to have it here, 4.36. Uh, and the first one will be here, 4.36. So in this case, the value did not change, but uh, in this case, it changed a little bit, but if you run again, you will see still this is the uh, optimal solution, okay? And also here you will see still this is the optimal solution. And here you will see still this is the optimal solution with this updated transportation cost, okay? But now again, let's come back to our problem number three. So what we have to do is we, are, we can actually run exactly the same problem as we have uh, considered for the question two, but we just have to remove the constraint of having having forced the solver to give the plant one plant Chicago Chicago plant open where it was giving the where it was giving like one for like these ones. We force the solver to give one in these two cases. Okay. But now let's say I'm going to copy this move or copy. I'm going to move to end, create a copy. And here now I'm going to rename it as I'm going to call it Q3 P1, okay? And we start with the base cost. So I'm going to use the multiplier one. So we have the same base cost, okay? And then I'm going to also remove this solution because as I mentioned, sometimes when we keep the solutions, then often Excel can just pick this, uh, pick the same values from its memory and might not give us the optimal solution. Then we go to solver. Here, we are mainly going to remove this constraint, delete. And here we are going to remove this constraint, delete. And that's it. And then we are actually going to solve it and see what we get. We see that the solver is running. So here we have now the solution for the Q3 uh, part one. So here we see that the total cost is almost same as what we had in Q2 part one. Okay, yeah, almost same as that one. Uh, here it is still recommending us to have the Chicago plant open here. Um, yeah, and it might be, it, it looks like a feasible solution, okay? So we don't really see any change here. Although we remove the constraint to give one on Chicago, still it is giving us the uh, same one, okay? We can uh, have a look here. Yeah, we remove the constraint to, for, for it to give Chicago as one of the solutions. But just to double check, it could be a good idea to remove it and just read on it again just to double check. Okay, so we go to solver and we solve it again. And normally it takes a minute and minute or a minute and a half, but normally I'm pausing it after clicking the run. So that's, uh, yeah, the, the, the 
blank one minute is not recorded in the video, okay? But I'm just going to pause it again and then come back when we get the solution. Okay, so yeah, we see that it's actually the best solution from here, okay? Great, 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 great. So now uh, let's try to do the part two and part three for the question three. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to say move to end and create a copy. Here we are going to just give it a part two. And here all we have to do is just put 0.5. So our transportation costs are half. Okay, and then I'm going to remove all this information from here. And then I'm going to just try it in solver. Okay. Solution is going on. Again, I'm expecting like one minute or one and a half minute for it to solve. So we got a solution now and it's a 74,282,000. And that looks like a very feasible solution. And most, yeah, it seems to me that it's the optimal that is possible. Okay. So now we are going to do the third part where we just double, consider the double cost. So I'm going to move our copy. I'm going to create, move to end, create a copy. And here I have this one going to say give me yeah i'm just going to rename it as p3 and i'm going to remove all these solutions from my decision variables and i'm going to put the multiplier of two here okay so our costs are now double and then we go to data solver just run the same constraint and the same decision variable same objective function and then click solve and let's wait until this one is solved because I'm pausing a lot when, uh, for the previous examples, I was pausing when it was running the solution. But let's try to see together how long it really takes because this is the last one from this case, okay? So here in the, in the corner here, you can see it is stuck at 100 and 106 and 106 million, okay? And then it has like, it has like this sub problem and trial solution and and uh, different values that it is getting that meets all the requirements, uh, okay. Well, here it is still stuck at 106. It cannot find a better solution than that. And most likely that is going to be our uh, solution here in this case. So, but it's still trying to find more solutions. Uh, but yeah, cannot find anyone that is better than these in terms of lowest cost, but meets all the constraints and all the requirements. Sub problem 92 trial, yeah. Let's see, yeah, we got it already now. So as mentioned, uh, that, that was the best solution that we can get under this scenario. And here the recommendation is again that we keep uh, the Chicago, the Princeton, and the Los Angeles open, and only Chicago open for ointment. Okay, that was the solution that we got. So basically, we don't need these three for ointment, and we don't need Atlanta for wipes. Okay, now let's try to compare this solution. So for example, let's try to compare the base solution, because for the base one, we had this 87 million, almost 88 million, 87 million, 961. And the part one here is also a base solution where we don't consider ups and downs in the transportation cost. Here we see 86 million, 325. So here we see that we actually saved about 1.5 million. Then if we compare this with the Q3P1, it remains the same. So actually it's maybe better to go for to, to go, it, it, it's actually better to go uh, with the, with the with, with having this, this structure, Princeton and Atlanta, uh, Princeton and Los Angeles, okay? So having three plants open for wipes and one plant open for ointment. So that's actually the best uh, based on these uh, results here. 
if we compare then the costs when it's when it's uh, double. So uh, when, when it's half, so here the cost is half. We have here in the question two, 74 million 880. In question three, we have 74 million 228. So in general here, it looks like, yeah, here we have the other three plants open, uh, not Chicago, but Chicago for ointment is constant. So we should keep Chicago for ointment open, okay. But now let's consider this one when the prices go double. And we also see that these two Chicago, Princeton, and Los Angeles. And here also we see Chicago, Princeton, and Los Angeles. And if we look into the total cost, they are actually still the same. Okay. So this should be actually the supply chain structure uh, for this production plant. Just out of Curiosity, you know, what, what if we force the Chicago plant to be closed? Let's say considering this situation here uh, or, or considering the base situation. So let's say if I go here, I go a mover copy, I create a new one, move to end, create a copy. And here I'm going to say, let's say, uh, let's say I'm going to call it test. Okay, test. And here, let's we are going to consider the base cost, base transportation cost. We are going to have, remove all of it, okay, all of it. And then we go to solver. We have all our constraints from before, okay. But we now add one more constraint. We said that the plant for Chicago it has to be closed, zero. Add and then this one also has to be equal to zero, okay. So we added these two new constraints here. We force it to be zero now. And then we solve it. Just want to see that if forcing the Chicago to be zero can give us lower cost than uh, what we could achieve. So we have to compare it with this one. Uh, and it's actually lower than that. So that's interesting. And yeah, it is the same. So actually, this is very interesting in a sense that when we force it to be uh, equal to zero, then we actually achieve lower cost compared to when we gave it like open, like, okay, give us the lower cost. Then it was giving us slightly higher cost, okay, about 1 million. Yeah, about 1.2 million higher cost. But yeah, after looking at this, actually now it seems the best would be to go with this one. So we close Chicago, uh, but we yeah, should not maybe consider closing it immediately, but we can consider closing it in the long run and move to a structure like this, okay. But what if we do like, <laughs> uh, let, let, let's just quickly do like for test, let's just quickly have a look that if we do it like test two here, we make it half, point five, and we do solver and we solve it. We have 74,297. If we compare it with 74,298, now, when the cost is half with this structure, actually now it's more than what we could get with Chicago open, as you can see here. Also, if I compare with this one, 880, here we have 297, no. Here also we had Chicago open, but uh, when we have this one where Chicago is not open. Yeah, this one, the Q3, actually, that, that was giving the best solution when we have low transportation costs. So in general, when the transportation cost goes down by half, then we should not use Chicago for wipes. That's what we get here. Yeah, kind of. If we do like one more, and see what happens when it's double. If I move it here at the end, 
So if I just put a two and if I see solve, uh, it gave me the same solution. So if I just quickly remove all these things and run again, One hundred and six million, almost one hundred and seven million. If I compare it with this, this is better. With Chicago Open, if I compare with this, it's better with Chicago Open. So actually, closing Chicago is not a good decision uh, in this case. So that's what we really get from here. Okay, but also in the end, the idea is that. Uh, yeah, we mainly get save like one one million dollar, two million dollar. So, depending on the company, if it's one million dollar, is a big deal for it to take all this uh, stress to really reduce the cost. So it's okay. So it's sometimes for some companies one million dollar is a lot, but for this company, how much it is, I don't know. But yeah, but in general, uh, this one. The, 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 the Q3, the, the Q3 one uh, here looks like that we should have a solution like this where we have Chicago, then Princeton, then Los Angeles, and then Chicago for ointment. So that could be the optimal solution, best solution, uh, it seems. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good luck.